This is Roth Conrad on American Safari. Today I'm with a local blues musician, Brian Beardsley, here at the Box Social in Sarasota, Florida. Brian, how are you today? I'm pretty good. Yeah? Pretty good. Having a, having a good day? Yeah, a lot of coffee today. Yeah? What have, what have you been up to? Uh, let's see. What did I do today? Play with my cat. Uh, worked on some music. Um, worked around on Facebook. <laughs> Lurked. Lurked, yeah. Uh, what's your cat's name? Little man. Little man? Yeah, he's like a man. But he's little. And he's little and furry. Yes. With a tail. Yes. What kind of, how do you play with your cat? Uh, I've got this guitar string that's kind of wound into a ball. And I just throw it and so he'll play with it. He likes it. When you say working on music, uh, what, like, what were you doing today? Were you working on your own songs or just practicing old songs? Or? A little bit of both, actually. Yeah? Yeah, just kind of woodshedding some of, some of the new stuff that I've been writing and uh, going over other things that I play over Pastry Art because I do a lot of covers over there. All right. And uh, Pastry Art is across the street from the Box Social? Correct. And you play there when? Saturday nights. They have live music uh, Wednesday through Saturday. Wednesday through Saturday. And uh, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, what kind of what kind of guitar were you playing today? Were you playing your twelve string? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just playing my twelve string. A little, it's bit, a little bit of slide. A little bit of slide. I've been doing um, a little bit more like Leo Kotke style stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of finger picking style. Um, yeah. But yeah, with some slide too. Because I, I, lo I love the I love your twelve string with the finger picking and the slide. Yeah, it's it, a lot of fun. It, it works well. You know, I get a good response from it. Um, uh, my dad gave me that guitar uh, a couple of years ago, and it's it's older than I am. So. And so, would you say this is a pretty uh, like normal day for you? you, you kind of. It's been a little slow. I usually like to get a little bit more done than, than I did today. Yeah. A little bit more like with music, or a little lo playing with the cat longer. Or? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, on for both. For both. <laughs> yes, for both. All right. Uh, I did up eat almost half a jar of peanut butter today too. Wow. I'd say that's an accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably not going to have a movement for a while, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes you need to you need to go through these phases. Yeah. Uh, are you in any bands currently? I'm still playing music with the Illustrated. I've been playing music with them for, jeez, seven years now. We've been we don't really play out too much. We've really been focusing on recording uh, a lot of stuff. But you guys, you still do like regular practices and recording and everything. More regular recording than practices, and it kind of turns out that the recordings become practices. Um, the, my other bandmate is uh, Matt Murphy, and uh, he's also in a new band called She of the Blue Needle. Yeah, I've heard them around. Yeah, too. they played at the. Actually, I played a show with them at uh, the Cock and Bowl. Yeah, I think uh, I was there for that. The fifteenth, yeah. Um, so, does the Illustrated have stuff online we can link to? Yeah, I believe we still have some stuff on MySpace. And uh, what about She of the Blue Needle? I'm not so sure about that. Um, I'm not a part of that band. Right. Um, I can probably look it up. Yeah. I like to provide links down at the bottom of the video. Yeah. Um, what about you personally? Do you have stuff online? I do on MySpace. It's older stuff, and I've I've, I've changed my style a bit. Um, the stuff that's on on MySpace is a bit more Johnny Cash, old school country style, and the stuff I've been doing recently is much much more blues. Um, I'm going back to like Buka White and uh, Furry Lewis, Sun House, you know, Lightning Hopkins, that kind of stuff. That's good. I like I like some old blues. Yeah, me too. Um, are you playing anywhere else around town? Um, I pick up gigs now and then. I'm going to start playing over at Olive Oil Company. Um, Tuesday nights I run a Retro Night, which is you know I'm just I'm not playing. I'm just running you know setting up a playlist. Uh, that's over at the Cabana. All right. Um, which is on 41, a bit south of the hospital. If you don't know where it is. Uh, so that's more like a like you're just kind of playing music and taking requests and things. Right, right. But I really try to stress that it's before the 90s. That's what I'm going to consider retro. <laughs> All right. So that's that's kind of uh, a good thing for a musician to do too, because it's it's kind of like you get to study and review yeah. the music. And and also people will you know they request something and it expands my knowledge. Well, nice. Which it's a good gig to get. I never stop learning about music. I mean, well, there's a lot of it. It's hard to keep track of. So many, so many things. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of uh, what are some of the guys you're listening to right now? Like you mentioned, the old blues guys. You listened to a lot of that recently. Or yeah. Any any other you know? Well, I've been listening to some of the newer stuff: Fleet Foxes, uh, Hawk and a Hatchet, um, Beirut. Uh, 
instrumental stuff, but also uh, I'm really digging Fleet Foxes, you know, the four or five part vocal harmonies. I'll have to uh, check it out, I haven't heard them. Really, really, kind of reminiscent of uh, America. But they're, they're a new group? Newer. They've been around for a couple of years. You know, they've had TV spots, I guess. Uh, That's fun. So outside of uh, music, do you have any do you have any other hobbies or anything you do for fun? Um, yeah, I make jewelry. You know, I find find rocks and wrap them up in wire. Do you sell it anywhere? Or? I try to. Here I there. try to here and there. It's not as lucrative as I'd like. More, uh, more gifts and things. And yeah, it really seems to be. Uh, they're turning out to be gifts, which is good for good for me. You know, it's good. Yeah. Good for. Are you doing? Uh, you do like the wire wrapping or? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's pretty simple stuff. I seem to have a, a knack for it. Do you have? You have? Uh, how did you learn? Like, did you have? You just got wire and started wrapping. Just got wire and some rocks and started wrapping them up, <laughs> and uh, it's trial and error basically. Nice. Um, I do a lot of uh, pen and pen and paper drawings too. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I'm just about finished with my second book. Uh, you don't put that online at all, man. No. no. I'm I'm hoping to publish it soon. I gotta find the right uh, the, the right, right firm, right, right publishing house, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you have an online portfolio or something. I definitely could. Um, I do some MS Paint drawings. <laughs> Those are fun. Yeah, <laughs> I remember a computer class like in high school. People would be just wasting the day away. Just yeah, like painting. a muffin going on a yeah. walk or something. <laughs> <laughs> or just ridiculous stick drawing. Comics and things, and, uh, right? Like a like a one-legged dog with a wheel for a leg. Have uh, you read any interesting articles or books, or seen anything in the news recently? That um, yes, actually, I've uh, just finished World War Z. World War Z. Yes, by Max Brooks. He also put out uh, the Zombie Survival Guide. <laughs> All right. And uh, it's really, really interesting to me. So what's what is that about? Uh, about 360 pages. That's what it's about? Yeah, about 360 pages. Um, World War Z is about... <laughs> uh, World War Z is... A, it's, uh, it's from the viewpoint of 10 years after the zombie apocalypse. And, you know, going through each stage of what happened. You know, the initial t denial of, of the fact, and then the great panic, and then, you know, people you know, being killed off by the zombies, regrouping, and then... Taking back, taking back the earth. So it's it's a it's a world war between zombies and people who aren't yet zombies and trying not to become zombies. Well, no, it's it's people who haven't become zombies, people who've survived the zombie apocalypse. So it's more like uh, interview styles, and it's uh, it's really, really interesting, really well written. What are uh, what are these um, what are the zombies in this book like? Um, your basic George Romero zombies, you know, headshots are are. There, are that's how you kill them. You know, they don't specifically feast just on brains. You know, it's, it's flesh. If you get bitten, it will kill you, and then you will reanimate. Um, so it's uh, sounds, sounds pretty straightforward. Sounds fun. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> how about uh, how about a joke? You got jokes. I got, I got a lot of jokes. Um, no, are you talking clean jokes or dirty jokes? Whatever got, you want. I got I got, I got both. Whatever you want. I'll give you three. The first the first two are it's a two part joke. Okay. What did Tarzan say when he saw the elephants? I don't know. Here come the elephants. What did Tarzan say when he saw the elephants wearing sunglasses? Nothing. He didn't recognize them. Exactly. Ha! I think I heard you tell that yeah, one. Yeah, I did tell that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and the uh, the other one is um, there's two nuns riding their bikes. They turn down this cobblestone street, and one nun turns to the other and says, Hey, I never came this way before. The other nun says, Yeah, it's the cobblestones. <laughs> it's not that dirty. Yeah. I mean, it's nuns, so. <laughs> <laughs> Little nun outfits. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about it. Yeah. Everyone, Brian Beardsley, uh, thank you for letting me interview you. Do you mind if I put this on my website? Absolutely. Go for it. All right. You want to say hi to anyone? Um, no. No? Not even your mother? No, she's not going to watch this. She's too busy. Arresting people. When I was a police officer on Longboat Key, so if you're on Longboat Key, watch watch out for Officer Beardsley. Watch out for Officer Beardsley. Okay. She will nail your ass to the wall. All right. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Rob.